Inflation may be at its lowest level in more than two years, but not low enough for our next guest who sees a recession in the cards to bring prices down even further. Joining us this morning is PIMCO economist Tiffany Wilding. Tiffany, great to see you. Um, talk to me about, uh, I guess, the lag effect that you see playing out. And is that really a second half story? Yeah, so like you mentioned, we do think the second half of this year is going to be a very different picture than the first half. And that's both for inflation and for growth. So we think what really resulted in a more, um, you know, persistent inflation, more resilient economy in the first half of this year was the um, increase or the acceleration in, in real incomes as a result of just falling energy prices uh, over the back half of last year. But that is that's ultimately fading. You also probably had some pent up demand for services um, just coming out of the pandemic. But we think the second part of this year, you know, looks very different, as I mentioned. We think growth will decelerate in the second part of this year. You have headwinds to consumption from the restart of student loan payments. You know, and by the way, under the surface, credit growth is slowing and slowing quite dramatically. Um, and, and the economy ultimately needs credit to, to run on. And so that will also be a major headwind at a time when monetary policy is very tight. What, what happens to unemployment, do you think, uh, by year end? Yeah, I mean, unemployment is is kind of been notoriously difficult to forecast, uh, you know, this cycle, you know, as a result of, you know, companies wanting to just increase more employees, um, but maybe work them fewer hours. I think there's definitely some secular trends that are changing and in, in how corporate workforces are evolving. You know, but nevertheless, we do think as the economy weakens, you will see unemployment rise. And usually, historically, that rise in unemployment has been characterized by negative quarters of real GDP growth. In other words, you know, we have never seen, uh, you know, in, in the history of, of getting a rise in unemployment without those negative quarters. So we do think you probably will see a recession. You know, and, and the bottom line is, is wages are sticky, even though headline and core inflation measures are coming down. Um, wage inflation probably still will look a little bit stickier and you probably need some unemployment in order to moderate that fully. So just to play devil's advocate, Tiffany, there's still nine million job openings in this country. We don't have any sort of immigration policy letting people in. And we have so much in the way of, of demand coming, like the infrastructure bill and the CHIPS Act and the American Rescue Plan. That's all still filtering through and, and should, should create a lot of, of demand for projects and for workers next year, shouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right that that stuff is happening under the surface. Um, but it's been one of the reasons why we've suggested that whatever um, recession that we get probably will be um, more more moderate on the more moderate side. You know, we definitely are seeing within the, the government statistics, we're seeing, um, you know, the CHIPS Act, for example, result in, you know, a major acceleration in that kind of manufacturing in the United States. All of this is good news. Um, construction payrolls, for example, haven't fallen um, like we've seen the contraction in residential investment. So, all, yes, all of that is good news, and it will be ultimately um, an economic buffer. You know, but nevertheless, you know, the fact that, that banks, um, you know, we've seen a pretty persistent decline in bank equities just on average in the United States. Obviously, a lot of that is coming from the regional banks. Um, but a 30 percent peak to trough decline, you know, overall in average banks, historically, that's been associated with a recession, a sort of pending recession. You know, so we do think it's still reasonable. Monetary policy is tight. Uh, it's still reasonable to think you probably will get a recession. Um, and, and again, in order for um, inflation, I think, to move back all the way to target, you probably do need to see more unemployment, uh, unemployment rate increases.